Hi, everyone, and welcome to another inspiring story about how people are managing their condition with Lymphopress. This name has shown up on roundtables and email links, and now I'm so honored and thrilled to introduce you to Sharon Dodds. Hi, Sharon. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you so much. Well, I am excited to share your story because everybody's story is important. People have different levels of their condition. First of all, what is your diagnosis? It is currently lymphedema and lipidema. Okay. And what came first? It was so difficult getting a diagnosis at all. Um, my diagnosis of lipidema came in 2016 after I went to Ohio State and was diagnosed there. Although at the time, they were also documenting lymph edema, not exactly lymph edema, but two words separately. Recently, I have seen Dr. Wei Chen at Cleveland Clinic who said definitely lymph edema and he will do some testing to find out if it's primary, secondary, that type of thing. So we're still learning things. I think we're all still learning every day. And it's actually kind of exciting to see breakthroughs. Dr. Chen is brilliant. Some of the procedures he's doing make such a difference in people's lives. But I want to talk about that very difficult period before you got a diagnosis. How did you manage not knowing what was going on with your body? Sometimes I thought I was a little bit crazy with all the things that were happening. My legs were swelling. I was walking and walking and walking and exercising and my legs were getting bigger, swelling. I was exhausted all the time. They were painful. I was having difficulty functioning or walking at work. Um, it was a very difficult period before actually getting diagnosed. The diagnosis really only changed the fact that, oh, okay, I'm not crazy. This has a name. Yes. And then once you got that diagnosis, what did you immediately go online and go to Dr. Google and try to figure out ways to manage it? Or were you fortunate enough to have a good doctor who knew a protocol for you to follow? I did go online, try to find support groups, um, information locally, that type of thing, to help me better understand how to manage or what could I do. Uh, doctor, the doctor at Ohio State said there's only a few people doing the surgery, the lymphedema surgery. So you can try one of those because there's really nothing else you could do other than wear compression. And then I was back to, okay, here we are. I need to be able to still function, to walk, exercise, and be able to keep it at bay because I wanted to have a life. So yes, I did a lot of research, that type of thing, to try and, and be able to manage the condition. Was there any particular aha moment or a connection that you made that was a game changer for you? There were a lot of incredible connections, great game changers. I finally found a wonderful lymphedema specialist here. I found a wonderful, incredible lymphedema support group here locally. Uh, so there were some really good aha moments. Okay, okay, I can do this. Other people are doing this. Now, what's the next step? At one point, my son had said to me, you know, there are these, these pump-like things, these hydraulic-looking things online on Amazon. Why don't we look into that? Then I found Lymphopress. When I started, well, originally I found FlexiTouch. It didn't, uh, I can say that, it didn't seem to really do a whole lot. But because my son had indicated, hey, look at this. Let's try this. Let's not give up because there are ways. We're going to figure out how to manage this. So he found the different pumps on Amazon and I found Lipopress and boom, it is so much helping. How? So you found your Lipopress. How did you connect with us? Was it through a round table? Was it through an email? How did that happen? Actually, I attended some of the round tables that you guys offer and you were talking about Lipopress, oddly enough. 
And I thought, oh, that sounds like the Amazon stuff that my son was, oh my gosh. So I emailed you after the round table and you told me how to pursue it. And I was still in working with the occupational therapist at the time who knew about Lymphopress Press and worked out the form, got it together, sent it to you guys. And it was amazing, amazing. I got it approved on the absolute first try. The staff there at Lymphopress Press was just so incredible. They got it approved to my insurance company and I got it. He showed me, the, the gentleman who came out showed me how to work it. You can set it up with the phone so you don't have to try and squiggle out to turn it on or turn it off. It is, it is so amazing and I do feel like it's doing some good. All right, I have goosebumps because Sharon, you know this is what I live to hear because I couldn't from my heart talk about something if I didn't believe it worked. And I've heard story after story after story from women just like you. And that it's easy to use. Would you agree with that? Very, very easy. I'm not the brightest with technology and I have no problem even using it with the phone or pushing the button. Basically all there is to it. You find in five, push the button. Super easy. And do you have the pantsuit? That is what I have, yes. <laughs> yes, so it it's goes all the way up. We talked about the pod, the whole pod, but we originally, we eventually went with the pantsuit, yes. Fantastic. And how do you feel when you're using it? And how do you feel after you've used it? When I'm using it, I actually feel like it's being, like my body is being massaged. I actually feel like it's making a difference. Afterwards, I feel lighter. And I that's feel relaxed. Oh, that's, it's you time. It's self-care, really. Yes. Just part of your practice. So... It was 2016 when you were really initially diagnosed. Now we're in 2022. And I'm sure that there are people in that dark side of their journey where a lot of unknowns are there. What would you say to encourage someone watching this interview today? I would encourage you to keep reaching out. Keep, there were times when I had to take a step back and just, okay, just breathe because this is exhausting. This journey, this seeking more options is exhausting. But then I would come back, take more steps forward, find something else. In my, in my travels, I also found a zebra support group, um, found out, I listened to people, talked to more people, found out that I also have EDS. So that was quite interesting. And it was all really just because I kept reaching out, talking to different people, talking to new opportunities. Like I wouldn't have had any idea about Dr. Chen, except that my therapist, the OT said, we live in Ohio, we're very lucky to be so close to the Cleveland Clinic and my insurance is in network with them. So again, I reached out and started, I, it is a long distance, it is quite a few hours, but he's absolutely wonderful. And it's one more step I'm taking in my journey towards my healing. And your story is going to help others. I think I'm going, I always listen when I'm doing an interview and think, what should the title of this be? And I loved when you said I wanted to have a life, but I think what's really striking me is the power of reaching out. You didn't give up. You kept reaching out. And every time you reach out, you made a connection that was leading to a brighter path. I am, I applaud you and I honor you for your resilience. It's a good word. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I look forward to sharing many more stories just like Sharon's. If you know somebody who's had a great experience, an inspiring story, send them my way. I would love to interview them to be Viola at lymphopress.com. Have a wonderful day, everyone. And thank you, Sharon. Thank you.